And as the prosecution rests its case today in the criminal trial of former President Trump, the defense has called its first witness. Meanwhile, former Trump attorney Michael Cohen maintaining that he helped Trump influence the 2016 election. Our legal correspondent Arlene Richards has the details. In seesaw testimony Monday, Michael Cohen made more admissions during the defense's cross-examination, but then reversed when the prosecution asked him a second round of questions. Key areas covered by both sides included whether or not Cohen had a retainer agreement with Trump in 2017, and whether or not the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels was legal. Cohen's conflicting testimony answered yes and no. Last Tuesday, when prosecutors asked Cohen about invoices he submitted to the Trump Organization in 2017, Cohen said they were false because he indicated that they were pursuant to a retainer agreement, when actually he was being reimbursed for the $130,000 plus a bonus and other fees, he said. On cross-examination Monday, Cohen admitted that he did work as Trump's personal attorney in 2017, even though he didn't meet with him frequently. The defense also got Cohen to admit that he had six other clients in 2017 who were paying him pursuant to retainer agreements, although he said he didn't meet them very often either. But on redirect, Cohen stated that he never submitted a retainer agreement to Trump and that he didn't expect to get paid for the legal work he did do in 2017. Cohen, as well as several other witnesses, have testified that the non-disclosure agreement he negotiated with Stormy Daniels was a legal document. But today, Cohen stated that this agreement was not legal. The reason? Because the payment was actually a campaign donation to influence the 2016 election. Cohen previously testified that in 2018, he pled guilty to a campaign violation and said that Trump was not involved. But today, he reiterated that it was all a lie. The prosecution rested its case after calling 20 witnesses. The defense called two rebuttal witnesses, one a paralegal who works for Todd Blanche and Robert Costello, an attorney who says he previously advised Michael Cohen. Arlene Richards reporting from the criminal courthouse in Manhattan. And outside the courtroom, Trump allies are speaking out on his behalf, condemning Cohen's testimony today. The court's gag order forcing Trump into silence, leading dozens of public officials to flock in waves to the New York City courthouse. Here's what some of them had to say about the trial. It has just come out that he has stolen money from the Trump Organization. He's lied to the media. He's lied to the organization. He's lied to Congress. He's lied to the court. He's a convicted perjurer. Here I chose to be here because prosecution matters. The truth matters. Justice matters. And it's not happening here today. And I'm here to tell you, after six weeks of unconstitutional trials, we have finally found a crime. Michael Cohen admitted on the witness stand just this morning to six different felonies of stealing Donald Trump's money. Trump advisor Kash Patel also pointed out that both state and federal prosecutors have long known of Michael Cohen's alleged crimes. But instead of being charged, Cohen is on the stand as the main witness in Trump's prosecution. Today's group follows a string of appearances from other high-profile Republicans, including House Speaker Mike Johnson. More are likely to go in protest to the New York City courthouse, with the trial now taking longer than expected. The judge says it's likely to drag into the end of next week. And will Cohen's admissions of lying and stealing from the Trump Organization be enough to acquit the former president? Joining me now to assess Trump's day in court is Michael Berry, executive director of the Center for Litigation at the America First Policy Institute. Michael, great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Of course. Michael, under uh, cross-examination, Cohen admitted to stealing from the Trump Organization and lying about payments he made for reimbursements. He admitted to telling prosecutors he stole from the Trump Organization, uh, testifying that he wasn't charged with larceny and he never paid back the Trump Organization. Cohen is an admitted and convicted perjurer. How does the revelation of stealing here affect his credibility as a witness? Well, if it were possible for his credibility to get any lower, uh, then we just observed it today, right? I mean, look, we've finally found the crime. 
uh, after weeks of this trial, of there not being any evidence of a single crime that was ever committed, today we finally heard the evidence of a crime. But in this case, the person who committed the crime was Michael Cohen. Uh, it's never been President Trump from the beginning. What he did was was perfectly legal, right, to, to have somebody sign a non-disclosure, to actually pay for your lawyer to uh, to engage in legal representation and then to call it legal expenses. That's what you do, right? I mean, that's it, Michael Cohen was an attorney for the Trump administration, or excuse me, for the Trump organization, I should say, and he did part, part that was part of his job. And so, uh, of course, he fell out of favor, uh, I think understandably so now in light of all of what we've heard, right? As you said, he's a convicted perjurer. Uh, he's now admitted that he stole money from the Trump organization. Uh, I think I heard it's six different felonies that he could potentially be liable for. But of course, none of that matters to Alvin Bragg. None of that matters to Judge Mershon. At the end of the day, the ends justify the means to them. This is a by any means necessary show trial that's all been orchestrated uh, in, in concert with the Biden administration, right? They've got their number three guy from the DOJ uh, helping out now on the prosecution team. So they're doing everything they can to try to lock up President Trump, but it's not gonna be successful. Michael, if you could just stand by, I believe former uh, President Trump is coming out of the courthouse right now. He may be ready to address the cameras. We're gonna toss it uh, over there for a moment. We're still waiting on the feed to come up, Michael. Um, they'll let us know as soon as that's ready. In the meantime, uh, Trump's defense brought up an email from former CFO Alan Weisselberg uh, to Cohen discussing in, an agreement, quote unquote, to repay Cohen for his $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels. This seems to somewhat contradict his earlier testimony that there was no agreement because the goal was allegedly to hide the payment. How damaging was that testimony and what was the most damaging testimony under cross-examination that you uh, have, have witnessed yourself so far? And can the prosecution ultimately recover from this? Well, the most damaging testimony has been the, what we've known all along, right? That, that, that Michael Cohen is a compulsive liar. Uh, and he just admitted that again today. And now we know on top of being a liar, he's a thief. He stole, I think it was $60,000 from the Trump administration. And actually, I think the piece that maybe people aren't uh, focusing on quite as much, but was, uh, to, in my opinion, very damaging, was Michael Cohen admitted that he actually has a financial interest in this trial. He has a financial interest in the outcome of this case. So much like Judge Mershon, he's financially vested in this trial, right? Judge Mershon himself is financially vested because he donated, as we know, to the Biden campaign. His daughter is a Democrat operative. So he's all in for the prosecution, mm -hmm. for Alvin Bragg, and all of his pretrial rulings and his rulings on the evidence, evidentiary issues that come up during trial all prove that Judge Mershon is also in on the fix to, to try to convict President Trump by any means necessary. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.